Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is going to be part two of knowledge, or rather for lack of knowledge, my people are destroyed. This is going to be like a, a health kind of thing. I'm going to do the physical stuff first and then we'll get to the spiritual stuff at a later study god willing of course i got rid of gab today no more gab you know it's pretty sad when uh you're a paying customer and people that are subscribed to you personally write you and say why aren't you posting on gab anymore uh i am well i'm subscribed to you i can't see any of your posts and then they go directly to your channel and then it's like oh yeah you have been uh posting studies and things but i don't get any notifications hmm yeah so yeah no thank you uh mike liddell the the pillow guy um uh, got a picture of him with uh he was at the uh christians united for israel uh rally or whatever and he posted it on one of his accounts saying how honored he was to be there and uh i i got a, i had a picture of the gab founder with uh alan dershowitz yeah one of the tribe he uh a uh, lawyer yeah you know one of the lawyers that jesus said uh they took away the key of knowledge and kept he says you're not going into the kingdom and neither are those that you know you take away the keys so other people don't go in either well i'm paraphrasing but yeah you know yeah one of the tribe uh he says you have absolutely no right not to refuse uh any kind of medical treatment that they, you know, the same tribe that makes the uh, medical treatments, you have no constitutional right to refuse their medical treatments. Mm, isn't that nice? So, yeah, I got a picture of the Gab founder with uh, that guy. They look real happy together. I don't know what happened. I can't find that picture on my computer. Of course, I got thousands of pictures on my computer i can't even remember where they all are anymore so yeah but if anybody's got that picture uh do me a favor and send it to me will you all right what about health you know the uh bible is kind of like the well it's like the manufacturer's handbook yeah the instruction guide but uh people don't want to believe that so now, if you're really interested, the book of Leviticus in chapter 11 tells you what you could eat. Leviticus was for the tribe of Levi. They were the priests that were set apart of the Lord to instruct the other 11 tribes of their conduct towards the Lord. So the Lord gave him a list of things and says, okay, this is what you can eat and this is what you shouldn't eat. And you could read about it also in Deuteronomy chapter 14, which from what I understand, Deuteronomy means uh, basically second law. I could be wrong about that, but if memory serves me correctly, you know. So, Leviticus 11 or Deuteronomy 14. Uh, all right, Leviticus 11, 12. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that shall be an abomination unto you. So, if it doesn't have fins and scales... It's an abomination. 
not supposed to eat it. Uh, let's see, Deuteronomy 14.10. And whatsoever hath not fins and scales ye may not eat, it is unclean unto you. So what does that include? Well, sharks, rays, uh, shellfish. Do you know that people die from eating shellfish every year? Because they are water filter. Well, they filter the water. And there are different types of algae that are extremely toxic. There is one that causes, it's red colored. And I was employed in water, municipal water treatment. And there are times when you get your water from a body of water, you know, like a lake. And if you had, this is, I've seen it in the ocean. They called it red tide. And there was an outbreak one time. I remember the water actually looked red and all the fish died. Stuff is toxic. Uh, I could look up the name of it, but you know, no sense in it. Uh, the Bible records that there's going to come a time the water turns to blood and everything in the ocean dies. I kind of suspect that those two things are tied together, but we will see. So obviously the ocean isn't going to turn into actual blood, but, you know, rather the color. But this stuff is nasty. We had dead fish all over the place. Because we used to live on, an, on the island in Florida. Back when Florida was like in the middle. Uh, we have 50 states. We were kind of like 25 or 26 uh, of, among the most populated states. Back when Florida was a lot of rural areas. We used to have orange groves and cow farms, cattle ranches, you know, before all the people moved in. We're in the top five most populated state now. So, yeah. But you uh, used to walk to the beach all the time. I mean, it was like a quarter of a mile away. And go swimming, like every day. And one day we had the red tide. That stuff was nasty. The water smelled bad. All the fish died. It was bad. And uh, I, I, I might have actually believed in the Lord back then. Of course, when I got to high school, I decided to throw all that away. Because I knew better. Or so I thought. But if you were to eat clams and oysters that had been in this kind of water or uh, a lot of times they take the sewage and just dump it into the ocean people got sick and died from eating shellfish for you know a reason uh, crabs and lobsters do you know crabs have uh, copper for blood from what I understand copper hmm uh, remember Star Trek? Mr. Spock? Vulcans had copper for blood. I wonder where they got that idea from. Oh, yeah. Crabs. Well, crabs were... You don't want to eat that stuff. And lobster. I used to love eating that stuff. Won't eat it anymore. And, of course, everybody knows about pig. Pigs are absolutely... Full of parasites. I mean, full of parasites. And from what I understand, when you go to take uh, tests at a doctor's office, they always tell you to fast. Don't eat anything for, I don't know, 12 hours or something before you take the, the blood test. Reason being is if you uh, cook some bacon and had it for breakfast and then go in to, for your test, you're going to test positive for cancer, from what I understand. 
You'll test positive every time. Turns your blood precancerous, from what I've heard. Obviously, I'm not a doctor. Uh, well, maybe I could have been a doctor of the Bible, but didn't finish the course. So, yeah. Dr. Bob just doesn't sound right, does it? No. But there's a reason why they tell you don't eat anything. It interferes and turns your blood precancerous. It's not healthy. Let's face it. But is it a salvation issue? I don't think so. And we'll cover that more later. Uh, pigs are eat garbage. They're basically the sewer system of the land. And let's face it, catfish, same thing. Down here in Florida, oh boy, we got a catfish restaurant. Get your catfish and hush puppies and... Uh, Hush puppies are basically just a fancy thing for corn fritters. Uh, and catfish are, they eat garbage too. They're, they're, they're just, yeah, disgusting. And they don't have, uh, they don't have scales. So I think the Bible knows what it's talking about. There was a doctor married a Christian woman. She was obviously a believer, and he wasn't. You know, I've told this story in the past, but... Um, so he said, you know what? He says, I, I, I don't mind the wife being a Christian, but I'm going to prove to her the Bible's wrong. After all, I'm a doctor. I'm a man of science. And he says, I know that there's health and diet laws in the Bible. I'm going to pick them apart. Well, he spent years going through, looking at all this stuff, and was comparing it to the medical knowledge. Uh, he spent a couple of years actually doing this, several years. Matter of fact, he wrote a book when he got done, and he says, you know what? Every single law, medical and health law, dietary law in the Bible has a sound scientific reason behind every single one of them. And he says, a lot of those we didn't even know until the last, oh, I don't know, 50, 70 years. We, didn't, we couldn't even prove the Bible was true until, you know, the last 100 years or so. Every single one of them. So, you know, pigs are absolutely full of parasites. Full of it. Um, you know, it makes sense. And like I say, if you want to know what the health and diet laws are, well, you could read Leviticus 11 or Deuteronomy 14, and you could read all through it and decide, you know, what, well, okay, what am I going to, what am I going to eat here? I just think it's good, good idea for the health reasons. Now, some people will tell you, well, you know, it's, it's, if you want to be salvation, you got to do what the Bible says, you know, you got to follow the law. You know, and God forbid you've eaten biscuits and gravy uh, one time in your life. Well, then, yep, you didn't do it. So, so is uh, what you eat important for your salvation? I don't think so. But if you want to be healthy, and the thing is, is if you're disobedient and you eat garbage and you get sick, and then you ask the Lord, Lord, heal me. Uh, he might say, well, no, because you didn't listen. So my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And for those of you who don't know it, uh, Smithfield Farms is the largest pork producer in the world, from what I understand. And it is owned by communist China. So if we ever have a food shortage, you better believe all that stuff's going to be going to China where, you know, they'll be eating pork and dog and cat and everything else. So, all right, let's go to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew is one of my favorite books. And verse 1. 
Then came to Jesus scribes. Now, what were the scribes? The scribes were those that were tasked, or their job was to copy the Bible. Because the Bible was handwritten in those days. They didn't have no printing press. Not until the Germans, uh, Gutenberg invented the printing press. I mean, what a painstaking work. From what I understand, it took months to do a copy of the Old Testament. Months. And if you made one mistake, you got a problem. So, yeah. So that, that was who the scribes were. And then remember, the Pharisees were a denomination of the you-know-whos. Uh, you have the Pharisees and the Sadducees, two different denominations. Uh, it starts with a J, and it rhymes with uh, the news. Yeah. Then came to Jesus, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem. And you know who hangs out in Jerusalem, right? And they were saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? The tradition of the elders. Tradition. You know, God was always, uh, and Jesus were always condemning the tra traditions. You know, <laughs> and what are the, 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 the Vatican? They, they always have their little traditions, you know. Traditions of the elders. And they said, for they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Now, is there something wrong with washing your hands before you eat food? No. Mom always said, wash your dirty hands before you come to the dinner table. There was a reason for that. But that's not what it's all about. They had like a little ritual that they would have to do. Oh, when you wash your hands, you got to, you know, do the right hand first, and then the left hand, and you got to go in a certain direction and then do it three times and then dip your hands and then you know I, i'm i'm exaggerating but yeah they had a little they uh added things to the uh the bible but he jesus answered and said unto them why do you why do ye also transgress the commandment of god by your tradition for God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. Now, we're not, ta we're not talking about somebody that says, Oh, oh, damn it, Dad. You want me to cut the grass now? You know, at least let me have breakfast and coffee first. No, that's not what we're talking about. Uh, like a curse, like a, like a Satanist would do. You know, you'd put a curse on somebody. I'm not talking about cussing here. I, yeah. But ye say, whatsoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whether what by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. In other words, what they were saying is, uh, whatever I do for my mother and father as a child, it's a gift. So if I take a hammer and beat their skulls in, oh, that's your gift. I beat your skull in. You know, the Bible says if you struck your mother or father, you were supposed to die, period. And, you know, people will say, oh, you know, uh, cursing your mom and dad. You know, mom and dad says, oh, clean up your room, Junior. Oh, you know, and then they cuss at mom or dad. And they say, well, okay, well, now we got to put the kid to death. No, that's not what they're talking about. But, you know, there's people tell you how outmoded the Bible is. But there was a pair of brothers called the Mendez brothers that murdered their mom and dad because they decided their parents were rich and they didn't want to wait until they died of old age. So they kind of helped things and hurried things along. You know, if we would have had Bible law and mom and dad had seen how bad the kids were and maybe they'd still been alive of course then again um i think she was uh of one racial group and the father was of another racial group 
but that's another thing altogether. So, but ye say, whatsoever ye shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me. And honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Now remember, the Bible says to honor your mother and father. But the tradition of the elder says, well, you know, whatever he does, it's a gift. But Jesus says they were not honoring his mother or father. And then they were free from the penalty of the law. Jesus says, thus ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Yeah, your traditions override God's law. And they actually have a, an entire uh, set of encyclopedias called uh, the Babylonian Tall, T-A-L-L, -L, Mud, M-U-D. Remove one of, put those two words together and remove one of the L's, and that's what it's called. Yeah. Jesus said, ye hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy of you, saying, Isaiah is just a Greek rendering of the word Isaiah. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And here's the punchline. And he called the multitude and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man. Yeah, it's not the pork that goes into your mouth that defiles your that defiles somebody, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Yeah, it's what comes out of your mouth that defiles you. In Mark chapter 7, perhaps this is a better rendering. Uh, let's see. Mark 7, 15. There is nothing from without a man that entering into him can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they which defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And when he had entered into the house from the people, his disciples asked him concerning the parable. And he saith unto them, are ye so without understanding also? Do ye not perceive that whatsoever thing from without entereth into the man? It cannot defile him. Does eating pork defile you? No. Verse 19, Because it entereth not into his heart, but into his belly, and goeth out into the draught, purging all meats. Yeah, it goes in your belly, gets digested, then comes out the other end, right? And he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man. For, for, uh, for from within, out of the heart, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness. Well, that's greed. Covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye. You ever heard of the evil eye? Even the Bible talks about that. That's a big thing in Italy, by the way. The evil eye. I think uh, gypsies, too. Uh, gypsies, everybody will tell you they're uh, Rome, Roma. You no, know, it doesn't talk. It's not about Ro the Rome. No. Uh, when they mean Roma, they're saying uh, Romania. But they're not from Romania. Gypsies were from India, and they just happened to go through uh, Romania. Gypsies were really, you ever heard the expression, oh man, I had a business dealing with that guy and I got gypped. Well, that's where it came from. They were always cheating people and stealing. And uh, when the gypsies would set up a camp uh, and the townspeople had had enough, you know, here it is, they got a nice little village and no problems at all, hardly. And all of a sudden, the gypsies move in nearby, and then all of a sudden, things start disappearing from everybody. Well, they they got together, and they would burn the gypsies' village, or the, 
their little camp out and say, get the heck out of here, we're sick of you. Of course, when, when they leave, and then there's you know, the, the thefts instantly stop. Yeah. But uh, now they're talking, oh, those poor gypsies are persecuted. Uh, yeah. So thefts, covetous, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye. And the gypsies were into that evil eye stuff. It's like putting, casting a spell on somebody. Blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile the man. Yeah, it's not eating pork that defiles you. It's all the bad things that come from inside the person that defiles you. All right, let's go back to Matthew 15. Uh, verse 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouths, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. And he called the multitude, and said unto them, Hear and understand. Not that which goeth into the mouth defileth a man, but that which cometh out of the mouth, this defileth a man. Then came his disciples, and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Pharisees were offended after they heard the saying? Hey, Jesus, don't you know that the Pharisees were offended when you said all this? But he answered and said, Every plant, every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Now, wait a minute. Doesn't the Bible say that God created everything? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But there's people that deny a satanic hybrids on the earth called the Canaanites. They deny that. Well, that's the plants that the Heavenly Father didn't plant. Yes, the Lord created angels. Yes, the Lord created humans. But he didn't intend for there to be hybrids. And yet they're all, they're all here. And one day there's going to be a whole bunch of people, probably in the kingdom, and they're going to say, oh, hey, uh, Bob, uh, sorry about that. I, you know, I know you were teaching that, and I, I didn't see it, and uh, you were right. And I'll say, well, you know, I tried to warn you, everybody. You know, those are the people who say, God loves everybody. God wants to save everybody. But... Uh, that's not what my Bible says. Personally, I think we should read the Bible more and listen to other people less. So every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. And then guess what? It's going to be thrown into the fire. Oh, yeah. Verse 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. Oh, yeah. So, then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us this parable. And Jesus said, Are ye also yet without understanding? Do, you, do, do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth in at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the draught? But those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the man. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. But to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Acts chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Now, from what I understand, a centurion was like a special type of soldier, not just a regular soldier, but a special soldier. And he was of the Italian band, so Italy. And, you know, Paul wrote a, uh, a letter, an epistle, to for the Romans. 
I suspect at least some of the Romans were Israelites. Verse 2, he was a devout man and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people. Now, what is alms? Charity. You know, he he's giving away, a, you know, a lot of his uh, salary to the people. And prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. So this guy is going to go, is being told to go to Peter. Verse 6, he lodgeth with one Simon, a tanner, whose house is by the seaside, and he shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. And when the angel which spoke unto Cornelius was departed, he called two of his household servants and a devout soldier of them which waited on him continually. Now, when I read this, I'm not sure if it's uh, Cornelius, two household, and a soldier, which would be four, or if one of his household servants was a devout soldier. Uh, I hope I'm explaining this. I'm wondering if one of the two household servants is one of, and a devout soldier. I'm wondering if the devout soldier is one of the two of the household. Uh, I'm not sure. Could be four people, but Peter Lake later says there's three. So I don't know if it's the... Well, it says he's a devout soldier, so I don't know. We'll take a look. And a devout soldier of them waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he sent them to Joppa. Oh, okay, I get it. So he's got a, a devout soldier and two household servants. There's three of them. That's an important point. Verse 9, On the morrow, as they went to, on their journey and drew nigh unto the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. And he became very hungry and would have eaten. But while they made ready, they're getting lunch ready, I guess, uh, he fell into a trance. Now, this is important. And he saw heaven, heaven opened, and a certain vessel descending, descending, going down unto him, as it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Wherein were all manners of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and fowls of the air. Now, there's no creeping things that are acceptable to food in Deuteronomy or Leviticus. Verse 13. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have not eaten anything that is common or unclean. So Peter was a strict adherent to the Mosaic law. He didn't eat mice, he didn't eat vultures, he didn't eat pork, he didn't eat shark, crab, none of that stuff. No, no clams, no oysters, uh-uh. Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common, common, or unclean. Verse 15, And the voice spake unto him again the second time, and uh, says, and well, he's saying, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, three times, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. And I have, I don't think I've, outside of an identity purse uh, teacher, I have never, never heard anybody get this right. Never. Everybody, all these people say, well, you know, now we could eat uh, unclean foods. 
God said it right here. Jesus came and shed his blood. Now all, all pig and everything else has now come. Uh, you know, it's not common and unclean. We can eat it now. They all teach that. Every single one of them. And this is where they stop. So let's keep reading. So, what God hath cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again into heaven. Verse 17. Now while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made an inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate. Hi there, uh, Simon. Is a, is a guy named Peter here? We're looking for him, you know. 18. And called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, was lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Yeah, you got three guys looking for you, Peter. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing. Don't doubt for nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the man, to the men, which were sent unto him from Cornelius, and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feareth God, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews, was warned from God by an holy angel, a holy angel. You know, if there's a holy angel, you know full well there are unholy angels. Was warned from God by an, by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear words of thee. Hmm, interesting. Then called he them in and lodged them, and on the morrow Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. And the morrow, after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them, and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. What is kinsmen? Family. Kin, kinfolk. So Cornelius says, well, they're going to be coming soon. So, you know, he's calling his family and near friends, people he cares about. Verse 25. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up, saying, stand up. I myself also am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. But God hath showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. You see, this is the interpretation. Cornelius and his people had we're eating unclean foods. God didn't clean the unclean. God cleansed the unclean sinners. This is the interpretation of Peter's vision. But nobody wants to, uh, you know, oh, it's okay to eat pork. Well, hey, if you want to eat pork, it's not going to make a difference if you go into heaven or not. Whether you're not, you know Jesus, that's going to be the difference. But if you get sick, don't be surprised if the Lord says, eh, heal him. No, I don't think so. You know, there's consequences for sin. I'm an expert. Believe me, I'm an expert. You know, you, you might believe and play around with a prostitute one time, catch a disease, that you can't get rid of. Will it affect your salvation? Maybe not. But in this life, and will the Lord heal you from it? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. All I know is, I don't think I want to find out. That's my guess. 
But God has showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Why? Because of their dietary things. 29. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying. You know, I came unto you without gainsaying. What is gainsaying? You know, gain. Gain money. You know, I didn't charge you money to, to follow you. Come here and follow these guys here. You know, that's why I never, uh, that's why I don't, that's why you don't hear uh, me on all these uh, begging for money all the time. Really. <laughs> that's why I don't do it. We got, uh, you want to hear people begging for money, turn on TBN or the 700 Prophets of Bell Club. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I was sent for, I asked therefore for what intent ye have sent for me. You know, wh why'd you call me here? What's going on? And Cornelius said, four days ago I was fasting until this hour, and at the ninth hour I prayed in my house, and behold, a man stood before me in bright clothing. Oh yeah, an angel. Bright clothing, probably shined like he had a headlights on, you know, his clothing, light coming from his clothing, right? And said, Cornelius, thy prayer is heard, and thine alms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa, and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is lodged in the house of one Simon a tanner by the seaside, who, when he cometh, shall speak unto thee. Immediately therefore I sent to thee, and thou hast done well that thou art come. Now therefore are we all here present before God to hear all things that are commanded thee of God. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. Righteousness. We got to work, do works of righteousness. There's people who tell you, oh, well, if you do that, you're trying to earn your salvation. I suggest you argue with Peter. Don't argue with me. So, righteousness is the fruit of belief. You don't do righteousness to believe. You, you, if you believe, you do righteousness. 36. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. Though that word, I say, ye know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they, who's they, Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. And people will say, well, you know, the cross is not a tree. Uh, really? What is a tree? Uh, when you make a cross, is it made of wood? Where's the wood come from? Uh, a tree. Yeah. You know, there, there's people that'll argue the tiniest little points. Guess what? A cross comes from a tree. So, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly. Not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before of God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, what name? Jesus! You know, there's a reason why they want to get rid of the name Jesus and replace it with Yahuwah or whatever. That through his name, 
Whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. The Holy Ghost fell upon these people. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles... Now remember, this is divorced Israel. Jeremiah 3 8. Look it up. Jeremiah 31 31. Hosea chapter 1. They'll tell you that the Gentiles are non Israelites. Nothing could be further from the truth. They are Israelites that were divorced of God in Jeremiah 33 chapter 8, or chapter 3, verse 8. They were divorced Israel. They had no hope until Christ. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as, as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And I'll guarantee it was it Yeshua HaMashiach. No. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Oh, yeah. You know, people, believing in Christ is more important than what you put in your mouth. But I still think it's a good idea not to eat garbage. But, you know. Let's take a look at something else. Now, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Paul warns Timothy of something. You know, there's a... Uh, I'm, I don't remember. I, I think I did a Bible study on doctrine. And doctrines. I'll have to look it up. You know, do you know I got over 1,500 Bible studies? Yeah, a lot. And like I say, if anybody wants to download them, let me know. I got free download. Uh, and like I say, I got rid of Gab today. So, which really gives me kind of a heavy heart because I spent three to four months loading. A thousand Bible studies to Gab took me three or four months. I mean, hours and hours every day. I mean, like six hours every day. Six to eight hours every day for three or four months. Of course, they were hiding them, so it didn't do any good. Yeah, telling me I'm getting a thousand views a day. Right. That's why nobody commented on any of my videos for two months. You're gonna you're gonna tell me a thousand people listen to you and and don't and don't write anything you know don't tell you how wrong you are or or yeah well I agree with you on this but you're wrong on that or you know whatever so yeah makes me sick First Timothy chapter four verse one now the Spirit what Spirit the Holy Spirit the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times the end times that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Oh yeah. Do you know that uh, witchcraft and Satanism, it is a very, it's very seducing. I mean, how would you like to be able to cast a spell and have the most uh, beautiful or handsome person uh, fall in love with you? All you got to do is do a little, cast a little spell or, you know, cast a spell because you want money or, or whatever. Or you got an enemy and you cast a spell and they're going to be killed or die. You know, when you look at television today, it's just full, full of witchcraft. I mean, unbelievable amount, uh, amounts of stuff. I mean, it's just full of it. 
that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines, doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know, people, let me tell you something. When, when people do something wrong and they got a conscience, it's the Holy Spirit telling them, don't do that. It's not pleasing to the Lord. There were times it happened to me when I really didn't believe, and I kind of ignored it. You know, there's people out there who have no conscience at all. They're called sociopaths and psychopaths. And uh, a lot of them are uh, politicians. Yeah. But when they have their conscience seared with a hot iron, they don't feel the pulling of the Holy Spirit anymore. When that happens, it's like the... Uh, when, when Noah built the ark and all the animals were inside and it started raining. And guess who closed the door of the ark? The Lord's hand closed the door of the ark. If you weren't inside the ark before that door closed, it was over. You were outside. You were going to stay outside. And you better learn how to uh, swim for 40 days. Well, it just, it just rained for 40 days and 40 nights. The water wasn't gone uh, that quick. You know, it wasn't, yeah, they, they, that it was over. When your conscience is seared with a hot iron, there's no more offer for salvation. So having their conscience seared with a hot iron Okay, now we're talking about doctrines of devils. Verse 3. Forbidding to marry. Do you know there's a number of what I guess you could say religions that forbid to marry? Do you know if you wanted to be a Buddhist monk that uh, they don't want you to get married? You know, oh, you got to serve whatever. Can't get married. What about priests in the Vatican? Don't they forbid their people to get married? And yet it is called doctrines of devils. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. And we're talking about clean meats here. We're talking about abstaining from meats which God created to be to be received. God didn't want us eating pork and vultures and, you know, that kind of stuff. Do you know that them saying that, uh, you know, we got to be careful about climate change. We got to get rid of eating beef because they're causing climate change. So we got to quit doing that. Uh, there's a certain group. Uh, the first letter is a W. Second letter is an E. And then there's a third letter, which is F. Yeah, put those three letters together and you know who I'm talking about. They want us to start eating bugs. Quit eating meat. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Hmm. For every treat creature of God is good, every clean creature, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Do you know that vegetarianism is a doctrine of devil? devils yeah and what are they pushing they want us to not eat meat to save us from climate change Ooh, i'm so glad that these people care about our 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 well-being yeah 
I don't think so. So, yep, it's uh, it's a mess, people. It's a mess. All I know is, look at Cornelius. Cornelius had a the centurion of the Italian band. He had a a prayer life. And he gave alms to the poor, those people that needed it. And let me tell you something. Roman soldiers were not paid. You know, you didn't become a Roman soldier because it paid well. You know, there, it just didn't happen. No way. You know, that, that's not why you would join the military. Uh, matter of fact, when I was in the army, we... We used to sing a song. You're in the army now. You're not behind a plow. You'll never get rich, you son of a bitch. You're in the army now. And yeah, I know. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I know I can't sing, but yeah. Yep, you're not behind a plow. You're not a farmer anymore, and you're not going to get rich in the army. Unless, of course, you are a general in charge of uh, military contracts. Then you will. Then there's a good chance you can get rich, you know, bribes and payoffs. But uh, average guy, yeah, I don't think so. And something you may not know, the uh, the black five star general that is the head of the Pentagon. Do you know he used to work for a healthcare company? Oh yeah, yeah. I forget his name. Uh, diversity at its finest. I absolutely love diversity. You know, it's our strength, diversity. Isn't it? Isn't it lovely and wonderful? Yeah. So, I hope you uh, enjoyed that. Uh, the Bible tells you what to do with agriculture and science and law. And economics. So I could do a, a Bible study on each one of those. I don't know if it'll be an hour long, but yeah. Uh, our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. There's people that eat bad things and get sick. Why? Because they don't know any better. They don't read the book. The manufacturer's handbook. And like I say, it's not going to make a difference whether where you end up, you know, the lake of fire or in the kingdom. That's not going to make a difference. And I'll guarantee you, Cornelius and his his people, they probably ate the bad stuff. And Peter said, you know, not to call any man common or unclean. So, yep, this is the end of part two. Knowledge. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen.